Well, hello, Westside family. I want to thank you for, for joining me here this evening. I'm actually sitting at our official communion table, and I'm here in the sanctuary where we normally gather together. Uh, I'm sitting in the corner. I've got the elements here on the table in front of me. I know that many of you have probably prepared elements for yourself. I hope you didn't go out and uh, take any unnecessary risks. You know, the symbolism is so important. Um, whether you're using actual wine or grape juice or even water from the tap. And maybe you just took a cracker or a piece of a loaf of bread and, and maybe you have that there with you. I don't know. What's important is the state of our heart. What's important is where our minds are and our relationship with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm going to start. I'm just going to read a little passage of scripture from 1 Corinthians. Actually, I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And um, this is the Apostle Paul giving an account. And he says, beginning with verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whatever you eat this bread, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. I wanted to read that particular version because I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Lord's Supper is all about. If we were able to go back in time and actually view what was happening there in the upper room on that Lord's Supper that took place oh so long ago, the night right before Jesus was betrayed, right before he was hauled off and arrested, put into shackles, before all the other horrible events took place and the hours to follow and an unjust trial, beating, flogging. We know that the Lord was made fun of. He was spat upon. All of these things occurred before he actually went to the cross and died for our sins. The significance here is that the, the disciples had gathered together with Jesus that night in celebration of the Lord's Supper a celebration that the Hebrew people had been doing for many, many years. It was in commemoration of when, when God had rescued them from slavery down in Egypt. It was that 10th and final plague where the Lord sent the angel of death throughout the land and any of the, the homes that weren't marked with the sacrificial blood of a lamb, an unblemished lamb, the firstborn in every home, was their life was forfeit and the life of the cattle, the livestock was also forfeit. So each good Jew had to go and sacrifice that unblemished lamb. It was the sacrificial lamb, which led to the angel of death passing over their home. That's where the name Passover came. And when Jesus sat down with the disciples, they were used to celebrating and commemorating that event. But Jesus was taking something they knew and making it something completely different. That old covenant that God had made with the people of Israel. Jesus was telling them that he was establishing a new covenant, a new agreement, a new promise with a new sacrificial lamb. Passover would now take on a new meaning because through the blood of Jesus, through his ultimate sacrifice, not just for the sins of a singular family, but for the sins of us all across time every man, woman, and child ever to be born. The blood of Christ, the sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God would cover us all. Not so that the angel of death would pass us over, but so that judgment might pass over us. When we one day stand before God, we'll be under the banner of Jesus Christ, those of us who have given our lives to him. 
His blood made it so that we can come into the presence of God. There's so much meaning and so much significance to the partaking of this bread and this cup. And I think sometimes we just don't think about it. We, we go through the motions and we do it. I think the Apostle Paul was right telling us to examine our hearts, to look internally, to make sure that we don't have something, some unconfessed sin, something that we need to take before God and, and ask forgiveness. Maybe we've spoken a harsh word to someone we live with. I mean, right now we've been on lockdown. We've been in this social isolation, social distancing. It's easy to get on people's nerves when you're stuck in the house with them for, for long periods of time. Whatever the case may be, if there's something in your heart that you know you need to make right, since this is a video, I would tell you to just go ahead and pause it right now and do so. Pause this video, walk away, pray, talk to God if it's something between you and him that needs to be straightened out. Maybe a harsh word was spoken to someone you love just out of frustration and isolation. I don't know. But maybe there's something you just need to apologize for. Something you need to do to make things right between you and someone else. I don't know. You know. God knows. If that's the case, you could pause right now, take care of it, and come back. That's the beauty of the fact that this isn't live. This is, this is a video. Whatever it is, I, I still feel like I'm, there, I'm with you. Uh, that's the thing that, that makes this difficult. Even as I sit here in this sanctuary right now in preparation and wanting to to participate in Holy Communion with my church family, I'm having to settle for doing it this way. The beauty of the fact is I know that God is here with me right now as I choose to honor him in remembrance, just as Jesus instructed. I also know that God is with you right now as you and your family are choosing to honor him as, as well through this act of remembrance through this time of Holy Communion. So right now, I'm just gonna ask you to maybe pray with me and then we'll partake of the elements together. Let's pray. Most precious Heavenly Father, Lord God of all, just as I know you are ever present, which means you're here with me, that you're, you move beyond space and time, which means I know that you're with whoever may be watching this video whoever may be participating in this way right now, I know that you're there with them. Father, I just wanna thank you for sending Jesus. I wanna thank you for the fact that he is and he was the ultimate sacrifice, that he is the lamb of God, the lamb that causes judgment to pass over us, the lamb whose blood made it possible for us to be reunited, reconnected, recon reconciled, reconciled, restored unto you. Father God, we love you. We thank you for your grand plan to make things right. Father, please, I, I pray that not a single one of us would ever take this for granted, that we would always remember the significance and the importance of the Lord's Supper, of communion, of common union with one another and with you. So Lord, I pray that you will forgive us our sins, Help us when we fall short. Bless us, Father God, and, and give us strength that we need to admit when we, when we have faults and to recognize those things that we need to bring before you, those mistakes that we made, those things we need to ask forgiveness for, those times when we've maybe been short with someone and not represented you the way we should. Father God, we love you. Thank you that we can be connected to you at any moment of any day, no matter where we are, no matter what we might be doing. But Father God, please bless us as we pause now to do this in remembrance of Jesus, in remembrance of the sacrifice that unites us all. We love you, Father. Thank you for loving us the way you do. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen. Well, I wanna thank you again for being here. Maybe in your mind's eye, you can Picture yourself seated in that upper room with Jesus and his closest friends and, and disciples, those who followed him so closely and still had no clue of the events that were really going to take place in the next 24 hours. I can't imagine what went through their mind when they actually saw Jesus taken away, when they actually saw Jesus nailed to that cross. 
when they saw him draw his last breath. All I know is that that night when they sat with him in that room, I imagine they were telling stories. I imagine they were having a good time. And Jesus did took that opportunity. He taught so many things to them while he had them together. I think he was trying to make sure nothing was left undone or unsaid. We know that he washed their feet that night and he told them, you know, that that they would need to serve others just as he had served them. It was Jesus teaching and leading by example, as he always did. Well, that night he took uh, common elements, things that they were used to. He, as they were gathered around the table, Jesus grabbed a, a piece of bread. I don't, we don't know what it looked like. I don't know if it was flat bread or what it might have been, but Jesus took it. And we know that he held it up and he blessed it and he prayed. And then he, he broke that bread. And he told the disciples, this was his object lesson. And he told the disciples that this bread was his body. That it would be broken for them, for you, for me, for all mankind across time. His body would be broken for us. So we take a piece of that bread and when we hold it, we, we think about the fact that we are symbolically holding Christ. We take this body into us. It's symbolic to the fact that we have accepted Christ, that we are one with him. So let's do this now in remembrance of our Lord. We know that in the same way, when Jesus was there and he was gathered with with the disciples, we know in the same way that he took the cup. It wouldn't have been a little, a little glass cup like this. Probably some form of a goblet. I'm sure it was a simple cup. He took that cup and he held it up. And I'm sure that he stared at the red wine that was within the cup. And again, it was symbolic, the element. And he said that this cup represents the new covenant in his blood. Remember, the old covenant was the sacrificial lamb, the one that they always did at, at, during the Passover festival to cover their sins in remembrance of what happened in Egypt. But Jesus was establishing something new, the new covenant in his blood, because he is the ultimate sacrificial lamb, the lamb of God. So Jesus said that it represents that new covenant, his blood poured out for the sins of many, for the sins of all, for the sins of your sins and my sins and everyone all over the world, across time, his blood covers our sins if we accept him and call him our Lord and Savior. So we do this now. We partake in remembrance of that precious blood that was shed for every last one of us. I hope you'll take the time to truly ponder, to think about these elements, to think about the significance. Go back and read through the scriptures yourself. Maybe you'll find a brand new meaning for you. I'm gonna let you close in prayer. Gather with whoever might be with you. If you're by yourself, bow your head and go before the Lord. If you're gathered with your family, Bow your head together. Go before the Lord. Maybe even, I hate to say this, but maybe even break that social distancing and hold hands. You can always wash up afterwards. I want to thank you for being here with me tonight and in remembrance of our Lord and Savior. May God bless you as you go. We gather together in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here. Blessings. Blessings.